Hi guys, welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. My name is Brie and today's video is just a chatty get ready with me. Gonna chat with you guys about life, advice, answer some questions and do my makeup. So thanks for watching in advance. As you can tell, I have no makeup on right now. I'm also, br whoops, I'm also <laughs> breaking out, um, which honestly this feels really weird i feel like i'm naked on the internet right now but i just wanted to i guess this is the first thing that i'll chat with you guys about i have been having issues with my skin like off and on since i graduated from college and it's definitely something that just like takes a toll on your confidence i hate not having makeup on um and i know that my skin isn't as bad as some people's but it gets so red and my skin is more prone to scars according to my esthetician. So things just tend to last a long time and it's really frustrating. Um, but yeah, I guess just if you have skin issues, I know how you feel cause it sucks. And here I am on YouTube with no makeup on. So we love that. Um, I'm not gonna like share all the details of my routine because I don't want this video to be like an hour long, but I will link everything in the description box and this is just sort of self-explanatory. This is just like my everyday natural makeup. Um, it's pretty light and I have pretty like oily to normal-ish skin, so the face products are for that for sure um i just started that like just so chatty going right into it so we're just gonna put some face makeup on for a second <laughs> i've been mixing two foundations okay i also am like the worst influencer like this is how i'm deciding to do this get ready with me and this from this bucket of makeup makes everything impossible to find but it's fine okay so i'm mixing like a bb cream and then this new foundation that i'm literally obsessed with by clinique and i just put it on with my hands i just said i wasn't gonna like talk through everything and here i am um but it's really natural but it covers up like this down here, which that's my biggest thing. Um, but it just like looks like your skin still, I would say. Also, the lighting just got weird. I have to wash my hands after doing that though because, you know. So I will get into questions. The first question I'm going to answer is... I'm probably, I'm going to try to answer like 10. I don't know how many things we're going to talk about and what I'm going to start talking about. But anyway, how do you stay motivated to do content? And that's a really good question because I feel like right now I'm going through an unmotivated uh, little section and it is hard. Um, but I would say you have to be disciplined. Like you're not always gonna be motivated to create content. You're not always gonna feel super inspired, but you have to do be, or you have to be disciplined when it's your job or if you wanna see growth. So yeah, just like, that's, I guess what keeps me motivated is knowing that like if I had a normal job, I couldn't just be like, Oh, I just like don't feel motivated today, so I'm not going to get anything done. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like you can't do that in a normal job, so you can't really do that when you work for yourself either. But I totally understand that it can be much harder to feel motivated when it's not as incentivized. Like you don't have checks coming or you don't have, you know, brands reaching out and you're just getting started. But... I think the motivation for you there should be obviously to like be able to get to that point and whether it's just doing it as a side hustle or doing it full time. So um, my nails 
are so grown out and tragic. This hand is way worse. We have a lot more issues, but I just, I hate getting my nails done. Like, I don't know if that is normal, but it is like torture painful to me. Not like actually physically painful, but I just hate sitting there and not feeling productive. And I feel the same way about facials. Like I love getting facials. I just had my, like, I try to go every like six weeks for a hydrofacial and I just had it last week and it was amazing. Um, but I just like, am so impatient. I just like to be able to do multitask and you can't while doing those things. Um, also back to the subject of skin, I, you so i got my facial and she also did ipl on this section of my face which is like a laser treatment which like zaps just like zaps it i don't even know what it does but it just like makes everything go away and then she also gave me a prescription and i bought this um clearing serum that's supposed to be really good so i'll keep you guys updated but i try to get hydrofacials like every six weeks i love them I feel like they're so good for your skin. They're good for anybody, whether you are um, like oily, dry, whatever. So yeah, I love them. I feel like my chest is red and I've also had this like weird little rashy thing happening. I have no idea, but um, okay, so we did concealer. I am going to, what am I gonna do? I was editing this video and I realized that I totally forgot to make an announcement about a giveaway I'm doing. I am giving away a big box of beauty products like skincare, hair stuff, makeup, has a bunch of really good stuff in there. All you have to do is make sure you're subscribed to my YouTube channel and leave a comment on this video. So good luck. I will announce the winner hopefully sometime early next week. Back to the video. <laughs> Um, next question. I have the questions on my computer because I'm filming this on my phone and I hope I don't regret filming this on my phone. This is also the second time I filmed this because the first time, like the whole second half of the video wasn't focused. So we loved that. And I just like, I don't know, these kind of videos, I feel like I was too like, not... I don't know. I was nervous the first time I filmed it, maybe. Um, okay, next question. New to Scottsdale, where to live, what to do, meeting friends, all the things. Okay, so I actually live in Tempe, which is like 10 minutes from Scottsdale south. It's where ASU is. Um, I live like closer to the Scottsdale side, so I'm like 10 minutes from Scottsdale. I feel like I don't really like go out and do that much, um, but I'll just go through like my ideal maybe date night in uh, Phoenix, Scottsdale area. I would go to Buck and Rider for dinner, have martinis, and they have amazing food really good seafood, it's all flown and fresh, and then their steaks are amazing too. Um, and then I would go to AZ88. They have amazing martinis and just like the vibes are really fun in there. And they usually have like a different art installation, so that's cool. Last time I went, it was like a cluster, like a disco ball chandelier kind of thing. And it was really cool. Um, and then I would, I don't know, this is like kind of far away from AZ88, I think, maybe not too far, I don't know, depending on where you live, but we will go to this place called Little Woody sometimes, and they have like ski ball and stuff, and that to me is like an ideal night, I don't know, like I don't really fuck with Old Town and that kind of stuff, like sometimes during the day maybe we'll go there, but I think since i've lived here since last july i've been out in old town maybe like two or three times so really don't go out that often um and i don't really know if that was a great answer to the question but i just like love phoenix area and i have a bunch of other recommendations on where to go and things to do you can find that 
I think on my highlights somewhere or I can just send it to you if you send me a message so let me know um oh and then the rest of her question was like meeting friends and a lot of people asked how to make friends as an adult which I totally can relate to that it sounds lame when you're like how do I make friends but it's literally so true and I don't think you really realize that until you're like going through it because I don't know I had so many friends in like high school and college and I'm still friends with a lot of those people but like meeting friends after college is just way different um but I would say my biggest piece of advice is don't be afraid to just like start following people <laughs> I feel like this is like such the influencer response to this but like follow people on Instagram like like and comment on their photos and then like dm them after a while like hey i like love would love to grab brunch or breakfast or whatever with you i don't know that sounds like so corny but <laughs> i feel like that's how i've genuinely met some of my really good friends which is weird and wild but just like don't say no to opportunities where you can meet people um like push yourself outside of your comfort zone um which i feel like just making friends in general as an adult is uncomfortable um and at the same time like don't settle for friends that you know you don't like vibe with like i feel like as we get older we also have a much better intuition and i think it's important to listen to that because you're gonna meet a lot more people as an adult that maybe you just like don't really get along with or don't really like not necessarily like get along like it's not like you have to hate them but um that you just like realize that you don't really want to be around and that's fine like there's nothing against them or you for that and I don't know just like be pickier and pay attention to your instincts and oh i just had to bronze my ears just pale girl things um and that also you guys also asked like dealing with well some people said breakups and i'm just gonna take that as romantic and friendship because i feel like both of those happen at this time in our lives so okay trying to think of what i need to do next on my face whether it's friend or romantic relationship just realizing that nothing is wasted everybody comes into your life for a reason and every relationship that ends is gonna bring some type of growth and i feel like when relationships end it's because the universe or god or whatever is making room for new people to come into your life obviously they're never easy they're both really hard it doesn't really matter if you are the one who did it or not like either way is difficult to just like cut somebody out of your life i feel like this is so cliche but focus on yourself be selfish do things alone and like make them fun like i love living alone and i love being independent and i feel like my after my last breakup it forced me to like do more things on my own just like little things like grocery shopping like buying my car moving to arizona like there's just so many things that i had to just do by myself and figure it out and i feel like that was so good for me and even like friend breakups like i feel like you you have that person and you are with them all the time and then that can end and you sort of have to like rewire yourself to do things that you used to do with them maybe i don't know if that really makes sense but i just feel like this past year i was already a very independent person but this past year has made me like five times more independent and i'm so thankful for that and that's why I think that it's important to realize that it's never time wasted. You're going to learn, you're going to grow, and yeah, that's my rant on that. But it's hard no matter what. So just like give yourself grace and spend time with yourself. Hopefully that's not a lame answer. What is next? Okay. 
I feel like this Q&A is just me ranting about random things and then I forget what I was even talking about and then it like goes into another thing. Anyway, um, next question, somebody asked how Joey and I met and I don't know that I've ever really given like an in-depth answer to this question. I don't know, I can't remember. Um, but basically how we met is I was visiting one of my friends from college. She was my big in my sorority and we were roommates for two years. So we we're really close. And then after she graduated, I worked for an advertising agency that she worked at. So we like worked together. Um, but she moved to Colorado like three years ago and I had not seen her since and we were just like texting one day and i was like you know what we should plan a trip like i want to come see you i just found a flight for like a 100 bucks this was like last september and um so i just spontaneously went and it was so much fun like we were there i got there on a wednesday and it was like friday or i think yeah i think it was friday like morning or something and I was like, I don't want to leave. Like, I want to leave Sunday instead of Saturday. Um, so I extended my trip. And then that Friday, she was like, yeah, I think we're going to hang out at the garage, which is like this fun garage. They keep like her boyfriend's family keeps like their four wheelers and like boats and they have a pool table. I don't know. Just like a fun place to hang out. We were like playing cornhole and flip cup and shit like that. And um, so we were hanging out and she was like, yeah, some of uh, Zach's friends might be there like whatever and I didn't think anything of it and um so we were all playing drinking games and Joey walks in because he had to work like later that night and so he got there like eight or nine maybe and he walks in and I'm like wait <laughs> Courtney who is that and we just like immediately I feel like gravitate towards each other like we're playing games next to each other and then like everybody goes to bed we're sitting on the couch talking for a while and um, then the next morning, like I was supposed to originally leave, but thank God I changed my flight. So then we got like a whole day on a boat together and it was so much fun. And then I left and we didn't even get each other's numbers or anything, <laughs> which is funny. And Courtney was like, so like, do you like him? Like what's going on? And I was like, I don't know. Like, I feel like I've known him forever, but I don't want to get my hopes up over anything and then he like dm'd me on instagram and asked me to come out for halloween and that was like a month later and i was like sure and basically the rest is history i feel like we immediately just like started dating and long distance has been so much fun like i didn't know that a long distance relationship could be this fun because i just never saw myself in one honestly like that just never seemed like something I would really want to do. And yeah, I like loved it. I mean, it obviously comes with its hard things as well. But in general, I would say that we both really enjoyed it. I think the most important things to long distance, somebody asked me like long distance tips. Um, my like most important thing is make sure that you guys have an end goal in mind. Like you need to talk about things sort of quickly because you don't want to get involved in this relationship and then realize that neither of you want to move or whatever. Like we kind of established that right off the bat. Like Joey kind of made sure that I knew that he has a job that doesn't allow him to like relocate or move. So, um, <laughs> that kind of answers another question I'll talk about in a little bit, but I will say just like making a point to make each other feel special every day is really important. Make, um, like small things fun. Like Joey and I, I don't know if we even realize that we do this, but we get ready for bed together a lot. And I just feel like that's like a good way to feel like you're together even when you're not. Okay. I cannot find my eyeliner to save my life right now. So that is annoying. Just spent like a solid minute searching for my freaking eyeliner. This pimple, it's just not the vibe. These two right here, twins, and they need two. Um, but anyway, 
Uh, so more long distance tips. Oh, always have a trip planned before you leave each other. That helps so much. Then you always have something to look forward to. You don't have to be like, when's the next time I'm going to see you? Um, uh, what else? There's like daily check-ins. Like, how was your day? That's important. Like, that's kind of obvious. Um, and just like realizing that long distance, you are living separate lives. Like, you're living completely separate lives away from each other so it's important to be understanding and um like ind just independent like i think it takes independent people to be in a long distance relationship because there has to be a sense of trust obviously in every single relationship and um communication obviously it's another thing that's important in every relationship but especially long distance because if you don't have those two things like it just will not work like you can't just be together and like talk things out like obviously there's FaceTime and stuff but I just think it's different um so yeah those are my tips okay I had to do my eyeliner not on camera because that was too stressful but I haven't even done my brows yet what am I doing I feel like I'm doing things out of order because I'm trying to multitask um Oh, somebody asked for tips on being confident, and I am a pretty confident person, but I feel like remembering that everybody has their times where they don't feel confident is really important, because I feel like sometimes I beat myself up for, like, beating myself up, if that makes sense, and just remembering that, like, everybody has good and bad days, um, and just knowing, like, no one can bring to the world what you can bring to the world and i think that's super cheesy but like no one is you and that's like your biggest strength um in friendships your job whatever it may be i am obsessed with this mascara it is the ilia volume fullest volumizing mascara and I'm really picky about mascaras but I just love that this is clean beauty doesn't clump doesn't flake it is a fave like so good anyway next question um when will you move to Denver <laughs> I feel like you guys have probably all been waiting for this question but um i am moving to denver at the end of the year my lease is up january like mid january so i'm either gonna move at the end of this year or the very beginning of next and i'm gonna get my own place there and yeah i'm super excited i'm so excited to not be long distance anymore um and we're both really excited but I also just thought it was interesting and I just want to point it out literally no one like everybody and because I don't think I've said like oh I'll be moving to Denver like literally every single person was like when are you moving to Denver like nobody was like is Joey gonna move to you and I just thought that was interesting so I'm just pointing it out but obviously I just said earlier like he has a job that he has to be there so maybe if he didn't have that job we wouldn't be in Colorado but I'm excited I honestly love change and I'm just really excited to be there with him and make new friends be in a new city switch up the aesthetic a little bit I don't know so yeah we're amped um another question Somebody asked for tips on saving money, and I don't know if I'm like a qualified person to be giving advice on this, but I genuinely like am a nerd kind of about this stuff and I love it. So um, I'll just like share what I do and that obviously works for me. Everybody is different and everybody's situation is different. I'm obviously self-employed, but what I do is um, I have a financial advisor and I have retirement accounts that I contribute to monthly. I have three different like retirement and savings accounts that like are separate from my normal bank. 
and my financial advisor handles all that for me. He's great. It's just nice to hold somebody or to have somebody hold me accountable and be like, okay, you're making more money. Now you need to be contributing this amount um, and all of that. So that's great. And then I also do um, every time I get a check, every time I get paid by a brand, I put in 25 to 30% into my like normal business savings account. And that is mostly for taxes, but I usually have a good chunk left over as well. Um, and then in addition to doing that, I save $10 every single day comes out of my checking and goes into my savings, which sounds super like weird, but it's something that I set up right when I graduated from college and I just have never turned it off. And it's just an extra $300 a month that I don't even realize that I'm saving. Um, and then in addition to that, I do $100 twice a month. So that I basically like don't even really notice is happening. And same with my retirement accounts. And I think that's kind of the goal when you're saving money is to make it such a habit that you don't notice it coming out and that it feels just like a bill that you have to pay. You can't skip it. And I would say that's my like biggest tip for saving money. And then in terms of like purchasing things, like let's say you really want this new designer bag and you're trying to save up money for that. My, what I do for that kind of stuff is I will like do my normal savings, but then I'll also sell clothes or do like little extra things to contribute to that. So I'm not just like taking the money out of my savings, if that makes sense. But that's just what I do and obviously everybody is different but if you didn't do instagram what would your job be and i love this question because i feel like i'm interested in so many different things um i love the idea of being like a fashion professor i think that sounds so fun um obviously i was a graphic designer before instagram and I loved graphic design, I loved doing that kind of stuff, but I think just, it wore me out. Like, I think I burned myself out because I was trying to do Instagram and graphic design for a company and graphic design freelance. And that's obviously when I decided to quit Instagram, be, or to quit <laughs> graphic design because I wanted to have more time to put into Instagram. So I basically was like, I'm burning myself out. I need to choose one avenue and do that because this is too much. Um, and I've been full time for like a year, over a year and a half now, I think. So that is wild. Okay, I need to blow dry my hair and then I'll curl it on camera. Okay, I just dried my hair with my Dyson Air Wrap, and a lot of the time I'll just leave it like this, but I kind of want some extra umph in it today, so I'm going to be curling it with this T3 Micro. I think it's one and a quarter inch, if I'm not mistaken. Um, this is my favorite curler of all time. Um, but I'm going to try to answer a few more questions while I do this. Somebody said what are your goals for the end of the year and not to be like negative or like a downer but I feel like my goals for this year like there's two months left of the year are to just like push through the rest of this year <laughs> um somebody or we were kind of talking about like confidence earlier when I was talking about my skin and how that's just like made me feel a little less confident at least recently, which is totally normal. Like we all go through phases where we're more confident or less confident. And I will say that something else I've been struggling with maybe more internally because every influencer is kind of going through it as well. But just the recent changes to the Instagram algorithm, my content is 
not getting seen and it's super frustrating especially when this is like my job but it's also something that i'm super like passionate about so it's just hard to feel like i'm working hard and like producing content that i like and i'm proud of and then no one's seeing it um like i dropped i hit a hundred thousand followers like almost 102 actually um back in like May I think and I'm back to under 100,000 I'm at like 99 point something and that is hard it's like especially when it's such a big milestone like that like that's just like such a ego blow and obviously I'm not gonna let some stupid numbers like dictate my level of success that I feel like I'm achieving in my job but it's also really hard not to when those numbers are always sort of in your face um so yeah honestly my goals for the year are <laughs> holding it together and that sounds super lame and depressing but like I think it's just kind of like that sometimes and I don't know maybe some of you guys feel the same way so let me know if you do make me feel more normal but i'm just going to continue to do what i'm doing and being happy and pushing through and yeah those are my main goals um but then in terms of like actual like goals i am making it a point to be more active on youtube more active on tiktok I just feel like I need to get off of just Instagram and really just like experiment with other platforms and be more consistent with those platforms. So that is my main goal, but I'm really excited for the end of the year. I feel like I have a lot of exciting projects and obviously I'm moving at the end of the year and I'm excited for the holidays. I'm a little stressed out over the holidays, but I'm excited to go home and spend like a week in Missouri with my family and yeah, so we love that. Um, okay, next question. I actually just saw it come in on my Instagram when I was blow drying my hair, um, but it was how do you know when to keep pushing in a relationship and when to let it go? I think that's such a good question and I feel like if you're asking it then it probably means things need to change and if you haven't already had the conversation with the person being like listen I'm not happy and like x y and z needs to change or else I can't do this anymore if you haven't already had that conversation obviously I would say that's the first step but if you have had the conversation and it just hasn't been received or you feel like they're not putting in the work or even like you're not putting in the work like if you both had a conversation and you were both like yeah we feel the same way um what can we do to change this and then like neither person really is doing the work like i feel like that's sort of your sign that maybe it's time to move on but i would say if you're thinking about it definitely like have that conversation obviously relationships are work and in their hard work and it's not always going to be easy but at the same time sometimes you have to quit for your own good and i think that you just have to decide like if it's worth like continuing to put energy into like are they putting energy into it i just feel like there's so many factors um and yeah Someone asked me about Brazilian waxes and like just wants the tea on them and I love doing Brazilians, literally life changing. I've been doing them for over a year. I go to Melt by Melissa in Scottsdale if you are from around here um, and I go to Delcy specifically. She's literally the best but um it is not as painful as you would expect i feel like and i think sugaring which is what i do is less painful than normal wax and i just like sugaring better i also think it's like better for your skin um i think normal wax can like cause pigment issues and sugar waxing since it's not 
pulling the opposite direction of your hair. It's like going with your hair. It is more gentle, if that makes sense. I think I um, might need to fact check myself, but I'm pretty sure that's right. And I love it because it is just convenient. Like Arizona is obviously pretty much year round swimsuit weather. And I just like not having to worry about it. And yeah, I highly recommend. I think it's so worth it. I'll definitely be getting laser hair removal in the future, but um, this works for now. I don't remember the last time I curled my hair on camera. I think this is the last question. Do you see yourself having kids and a family? Yes, I do. I have always seen myself having kids, like even when I was little, like I've always seen myself being a mom and I think it has a lot to do with that I'm the oldest in my family. I have three younger siblings um, and so I've just always sort of had that like nurturing mom personality. Um, so yeah, definitely want, you know, the kids, the husband, the dog, but probably a little ways out. So nothing in the near future in terms of like children, maybe a dog child, really have puppy fever or another cat, but <laughs> I don't know if Gus would allow another cat into this house. Um, okay, this was like an interesting experience for me. I've never done a get ready with me video before other than when I tried to film it last week and I was just like an awkward mess. Um, but I really liked it and I don't know, it's kind of like when you're getting ready with a friend or like, I don't know if anybody else's boyfriends like sits in the bathroom while they get ready. Like I just love that so much more fun getting ready and that's sort of what this felt like to me. But hopefully you guys liked it too. This was really fun. So let me know if I should do another one like this. Maybe we can cover a specific topic next time. Um, thanks for listening to me ramble. That was just super chatty and I will see you guys next time.